Hello everyone, this is Psy Soldier here. Welcome back to our Let's Play Dominions 4, Lanka, Dawn of the Demon Apes. It is now late winter and you're 8 of the Ascension Wars. And uh, we have actually gone through this one other time before, but we actually crashed. Uh, actually, it was caused by the same reason that we experienced the last crash from, when we actually had a number of our Wraith Lords selected along with the Wraith Lord that had the Gift of Kurgai, and I went to send a, a Lesser Whore using the uh, spell from the Gift of Kurgai, and apparently anytime you have multiple Wraith Lords selected and you try to do that, it crashes your game. So we will try to remember not to do that again. But anyways, let's uh, run through this here. I think I found one magic site from the uh, Troll Peaks here. Uh, that was the Deep Crevasse. I don't think I actually found any other magic sites. But we cast a lot of spells. We teleported, uh, a couple of our mages up. Uh, well, teleported him up there. And, uh, found a decent amount of Blood Slaves. Nothing terribly amazing. And we had a battle in White Peaks. Some crazy troll has actually attacked our province, leading a whole bunch of spiders. We didn't have much province defense there. And we've actually lost the province. Well, he's got all these giant spiders that are attacking us, but uh, we really don't have much in the way of province defense, so... He uh, fairly successfully wiped us out there. All their spiders are shooting webs at our monkeys, which are basically rendering them completely defenseless and uh, just wiped us out there uh, looking around we've caught another sneaking enemy and that's really about it uh, so now we have actually successfully moved all these guys into this province so we're gonna go ahead and set them to reanimate at least all of them are able to reanimate. And I think when I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, send the Lesser Horror, which is what crashed my game the first time I was trying to uh, do that, which is making us do everything over again, which kind of stinks here. Uh, hopefully that's a bug that they'll get fixed at some point soon. I have quite a few people to uh, give orders to reanimate here. Alright, let's go ahead and throw that Starshine Skullcap and the uh, Tome of High Power back into the laboratory. Scroll all the way down here for that. I don't think this guy had old age before, but uh, he apparently just hit that mark where he's got old age now and I think I actually have another soul contract we're gonna give that to that guy alright let's go ahead and check our army set up here and make sure that uh, all of our communion masters have actually got Crystal Matrixes. He does. And I have to make sure that the other two also have Crystal Matrixes. Unfortunately, we have to scroll down quite a bit further now that we've moved these guys in here. So he's got one. And we should have one more here. Wherever she is at. Alright, come on now. I was thinking it was going to be her. But, ah, here we are. Okay, she actually has one, so I've already taken care of that. Okay. So, that just kind of leaves, uh... This guy here, we need to give him a Crystal Matrix. 
So now he can actually cast spells as a communion master. And we're going to go ahead and script him to do some fire spells. I guess we'll start out with Phoenix Pyre, which will give a plus one fire magic to hopefully everyone in the communion. I'm not, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure that that will actually give fire magic to anyone that doesn't already have fire magic. It might actually require that they currently have a point in fire magic to actually benefit from that. In fact, I think that is how it works, but we're just going to cast it anyways. I think the Phoenix Pyre actually, or Phoenix Power, actually gives you some resistance to fire on top of that. So even then, it's not terribly useless. And I guess we'll do Fire Shield and Protection from Fire. I think we can also do uh, Resist Cold as well. So that's the spells that he's going to be casting as part of the uh, Communion buffs here. And then he's just going to stay behind the enemy troops. Let's go ahead and set him way back here. That's actually what I meant to do when I was scrolling down here was to uh, ensure that I put the Communion Masters back behind the lines of uh, combat. So I have a couple more here that I need to do that with. As soon as I can scroll all the way down there and find them. Alright. This guy can be moved back behind the lines, and we have that one more down here. Uh, eventually, I'll find her. Should be getting close. There she is. Excellent. Okay. Now then. Let's uh go ahead and find our Wraith Lord that has the gift of Kurgai. I believe that would be old Quick Death here. I want to make sure I have only him selected. And we are going to go ahead and send a lesser whore against them. Thankfully we didn't crash that time. And let's go ahead and We'll revive some Banes with these guys. Revive several Banes, because we're going to have quite a few more troops to uh, lead into combat. And I guess uh, they can also reanimate. Rather, he can. Okay. So the Dark Lord has empowered himself in magic once again, bumping everything up to five at the minimum. So let's uh take a look here. And now he's actually able to forge the magic lamp. That's a uh, another really cool item. He can forge the Boots of Antius. It gives Earth Magic, Limited Regeneration, Map Move, and Reinvigoration. Looks like he can forge just about every magic armor now. And we still want that Helm of Perfection. Uh, he's currently able to forge the Barrier now as well. Which is a pretty darn awesome shield. And on the next turn, he could actually forge the Aegis. Which is, I think, the most awesome shield. Hmm. Alright. I would kind of like to uh, just go ahead and forge the magic lamp. Let's go ahead and do that. And we may be able to forge some rings of sorcery here now. These guys are all up to 
seven in astral magic, I do believe. Well, not all of them. Let's go ahead and give him a crystal coin. And... Looks like our two Wraithords are at least up to a seven in Astral. Hmm. Thought I forged... I thought I had another crystal coin. Apparently not. Okay, then. Uh, let's go ahead and take that away from him temporarily, because I think I'm going to need that in order to uh, get some of those other guys up further north here. Let's go ahead and forge some rings of sorcery. Hmm. Apparently, uh, they are not able to forge a ring of sorcery yet. Uh, I guess I'll just empower these two guys. It's getting rather expensive to empower here. And where are we here? Let's go ahead and give him crystal coin. And I guess we'll give him the, uh, uh, rather him, the Tome of High Power. And we're going to teleport these guys as far as we can. Cast the Ritual Spell Teleport. So at least one of them will make it all the way. And the other one is just going to have to teleport there instead. And we're going to go ahead and move our Banes on up. It looks like we've got plenty of the uh, Slave Matrixes. And... I guess we'll go ahead and just forge one more Crystal Matrix and... One slave matrix for right now. I don't even think I really need to do that. I'm going to take him and I'm going to go ahead and forge rather than cast. We're going to forge another soul contract. And I'm going to empower Fergus here in blood magic. And let's see here. Antrax. Well, we're forging the magic lamp. Let's just have him cast Augury if there's anything left to sight search with that. Looks like there is. We're still casting Voice of a Spoo and Gnome Lore. Uh, I'll just forge another one of these ivory bows. And let's keep moving these guys up here. They'll be ready to, uh, actually it looks like by the time I get this guy that's teleporting here up here, uh, and they're there. So we'll actually be ready to uh, move against Helheim from both of these positions at about the same time now, actually. Uh, that's going to be quite good, actually, I think. And I've got all these guys. Just have them research for right now. I'll tell you what. We'll forge some bows of war. This thing's only cost five air gems.
And I'll tell you what, we'll force some there as well. And we'll move him on up. We're still casting the uh, improved crossbreeding. We've got some pretty nice uh, guys up here. Pretty powerful uh, troops in that uh, province now. And let's see here. Got a few priests that need to be set to uh, reanimate. And we need to assign some troops to a few of these mound kings as well. Alright, here we are. Takes care of them. Goes to him. And give them to him. Alright, so we've got a pretty freaking huge amount of uh, long dead in this province as well. It wouldn't hurt us to uh, go ahead and construct a temple in this province. Not a temple, but a... Uh... Oh, actually, we do have uh, a few provinces that we're lacking temples in. But uh, I actually can't move there. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll have to take care of that at a later date when we can actually cross that river there. Hmm. Well, eventually we'll be able to uh, do that. Alright, so we are forging the magic lamp. That's going to give us a uh, Another pretty darn good mage with a, a lot of magic paths. We're still doing no more. We're still more recruiting more guys over here. Uh tell you what. Let's have this guy forge a crystal coin instead. I think that might be more useful for us. And we'll have this one forge a slave matrix instead. And was there anything else of use that they can forge? Pebble pouch. Fire in a jar. Fire in a jar is actually kind of cool. Hmm. Brimstone boots? Ah, that's good enough. Just have him researched for now. So we're going to have access to pretty much just about every magic path with the uh, communion we're putting together. I think everything except for water, really. So these Wraith Lords, hopefully they'll all be uh, quite powerful once the uh, fatigue from the communion wears off and they actually get to attack the enemy. Well, let's have this guy reanimate here. Uh, most of the uh, buff spells don't actually cost a whole lot of fatigue anyways. So they should actually be alright. And we'll have to take care of these spiders at some point soon here. Let's uh, get these guys to research though. And have him research. Should be another one here somewhere. Alright there. Research. And these two guys can research. 
Research here. Research there. He can go ahead and construct a temple. And he can construct a temple. And let's go ahead and get him out of there. Okay. I'll just have him research for now. And speaking of research, I don't know that I want to uh, put all of that in there. Let's go for some evocation, I think. We're going to make sure that we get that level uh, 8 in Thaumaturgy, and I guess we'll go ahead and get level 5 in evocation as well here. So that should be good. So we'll be able to call the worm that walks, uh, beast mastery. All animals on the battlefield are bound to the will of the caster. It's not terribly useful, I don't know, maybe if I was... I suppose if I was fighting against somebody that had a whole bunch of wolves or something, it might would be useful. Uh, yeah, other than that, we're just kind of waiting on Soul Drain there. And I believe we're pretty much good to go. Let's go ahead and end this turn, and we'll end the video as well. So, as always, if you enjoy our videos, I hope you'll like and subscribe, and we will see you again soon, as in just a couple turns from now, we will prepare to bring the storm on Helheim here. As always, thank you very much.